And we're joined this morning by Shino Fagbenro Byron, who is a development expert. Good morning, I thank you for coming on today. Good morning. Thank well, interestingly, we had a different generation joining us on this program uh, this week to look at how they assess the country so far. Well, some of them think that, well, perhaps we've got our challenges, but we could do better. Others just think, look, we, we, we shouldn't even talk about having done better because we've done, we actually have declined from what it used to be, the days where they got a lot of scholarships, the economy was booming, uh, political uh, class was, well, appreciably or fairly doing well. But these days, you have a lot of young people who just think otherwise. You have the economic indices who say, which says one thing, and then the reality out there, seemingly different. Let's get your perspective. Nigeria at 53. Well, Nigeria's at 53. Um, there's a saying that um, despite the fact that we've come a long way, we've still got far to go. And uh, quite frankly, we've gotten to a point whereby we're at crossroads. Uh, we need to think, look back a bit uh, to be able to step forward. Um, basically, this is a country that was designed uh, with a lot of hope that at least we could have some form of economic stability, um, economic growth political stability and social harmony within a given geographical space. So the first thing that we at least agreed on is the fact that Nigeria is a geographical space. It's geographically defined, which means it has form now. Uh, we've been spending most of the time trying to work at the substance of what Nigeria portends. And the primary thing is that Nigeria should serve Nigerians so that Nigerians can serve the rest of the world by serving its proximate environment. Now, how far we've gone or what we've done with that is a matter of history, a matter of uh, um, fact, and um, a matter of reality. So. so which should we start off with? Uh, let's look at uh, reality. Okay. The reality is uh, that we have uh, various challenges. At the same time, the reality is that we've come a long way. I mean, I remember ages ago in this country, um, uh, in terms of economics, we had uh, limitations in terms of what we could achieve, in terms of what we could um, aspire to. Um, the world itself has moved on. And Nigeria has not necessarily been left behind in certain things. Um, we've gotten a broader economic base. But having said that, you know, we have serious political challenges that almost threatens the very existence of Nigeria. Um, the internal dynamics of the country, um, you know, uh, calls for concern at times. We've been through certain stretching circumstances including the civil war but having said that we've come we've overcome it um, not by any other thing but the nature of the Nigerian um, the fact that the Nigerian himself is an eternal optimist uh, the fact that we are a very spiritual people the fact that unlike the US where most people are immigrants the majority of us here are indigents and therefore we are very connected to the substance of the soil and to the substance of the environment in any case we're africans and africans have been through a lot from colonialization to slave trade and some of us believe that nigeria and nigerians actually um were designed to show that the black man is possible there's a possibility or the capability of the black man to emancipate but to emancipate is not a tea party you have to go through certain things oh. they say if your road is smooth that there is no story to tell so they say may your road be rough so that is just like taishulari said you need to have some option you have to have met some challenges to be able to achieve successes and we are just at that point whereby we need to start recalibrating you know, I know you speak to you know, uh, at least young people out there yes. about this country. Yes. You know, uh, some time ago, uh, before 1978, when you had uh, 
arise, Nigeria will hail the yes. not change and national anthem to arise, oh, compatriots, uh -huh. 1978 till date. You yeah. know, the framings, the wordings of the anthem those days. But basically, even the two stanza, serve yes. our fatherland, yes. serve our fatherland. Though the tribe and tongue may differ, the first one, then Brother the second stand. one, you know, to, to serve, yes. defend the country. Yes. But how real is this to lots of young people out there? Some of them just think, what was that you said? So real well, you see, the, the, the point is that, you see, unfortunately, the older generation must take a bit of the blame in the sense that, you know, there's a Yoruba proverb which says that it's the horse in front that the horse at the back sees to pursue its pace. Um, but having said that, the young themselves have found a way and they are finding various ways around it because each generation with its own challenges will have to um, overcome whatever challenges it's, it, it finds itself. Um, I happen to be, I, I was born a year before the independence, right? And when we were growing up, it was unbelievable. It was as if this country was going to become, you know, the golden hub, you know. There was a lot of hope. Oh, absolutely. Plenty of hope. And um, I belonged to, um, uh, you know, uh, those who fortunately, um, you know, had, had some of the best. So you have something to look up to them? Oh, ha absolutely. Can you say the same for today? Well, it depends on which angle. Every generation says that it was better in its own time. <laughs> okay. Right? You will have something to look up to because there are new things. There are new dynamics. In those days, I mean, you need to write a letter. You write a letter long and, and you wait for two weeks, three weeks before you get the reply. This time is different. If you want to learn something, you have to head for the library, you know. And, but this time is different. There's access. There's all sorts of things that we can tap onto. How about from the perspective of leadership? You see, leadership, as far as I'm concerned, you don't have to own a title to become a leader. Okay. You don't have to have a title to become a leader. But, but at the end be... of the day, there is responsibility associated with structured leadership. In this country, we've, it's, it's the same thing with leadership. We've tried. Um, I believe that we had the good fortune of having um, a lot to learn from the first crop of leaders that we had. Um, quite frankly, um, the, um, there's still so many things that we could learn from them in terms, of their, in terms of their seriousness, in terms of their certain attitudes. However, the information that those leaders had at that time is not as much as the leaders have today. The challenges that the leaders had then is not as much as the challenges that the leaders have today. Now, if you proceed on that trajectory, we've had the good, we've had the bad, we've had the ugly. Having said that, there is no leader that has ruled this country before that has not left us cause to either thank God. Really? Yes. Thank God? How? Yes or to realize that there's something that God has blessed us with. Now, I don't want to mention names, but we've had some really bad times, especially during the military, I mean, quite frankly. Having said that, I believe that there is one or two things that each of them has brought out in us. At times when you face the biggest challenges in life, or when you face the biggest threats, it brings out the best in you. I haven't seen a situation whereby civil society, right, has been so uh, coherent and so forceful and so determined to pursue certain things as under when you have a military regime of high dictatorship, if you know what I mean. So by between 1998 and 19, between 1995 and 1998, you had, um, you know, uh, Nigerians all on the same page, thinking democracy thinking what it is. You, 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 you can't really know what is good except you compare with what is less than efficient. Mm 